welcome to my show confession of a futurist today i have a very special guest he has spent more than two decades in understanding how the sensors works his phd he co-founded a company which got acquired by fossil big thing we want to talk today about is interconnectedness of these sensors when we talk about the sensors we are not really talking about just fitness trackers we are not talking about the sensors we see in our house we are not talking about just alexas of the world we are talking about interconnectedness of different sensors shridhar welcome to my show ji thank you very much for having me it's a pleasure to be here. so shridhar i want to talk about how you see our world and let's talk about fitness tracker for a minute a lot of organizations collecting tons of our data what do you think about our future and what do you see the areas of value creation for our audience yeah there's a uh, there's a very well known saying um in the engineering world that says uh you can never improve what you never measure or I'm mm-hmm. paraphrasing if you can't measure it you can't improve it. uh which makes a ton of sense in things like factories and, and what not but when it comes to your own health your own biometrics your own your your own body the ability to measure uh your health uh, we have that ability today with a number of different sensors technology is there but it raises a question of do you want to entrust this information to a third party to the government to a, a, to a private enterprise um and the best i i i understand that shridhar that is a bigger problem i really yeah. wanted to tackle one problem today in our call in this conversation as how you see that interconnectedness create value for the person you and me both know there are million other ways we can anonymize the data create a lot of things around it does it create value for me by sharing this data or not that is one biggest problem i have to if you look at companies like 23 and me where if you do your own if you sequence parts of your genome and you see how you fit into the larger population you can find out specific things like do i have a a a gene that is has a high likelihood of cancer or xyz mm-hmm. the only mm-hmm. reason you know that is because other people with that gene have also been diagnosed with cancer so the fact that you're sharing your data medically and correlating that and comparing it to other people who have shared it creates value now then you can make a educated decision as to what you want to do with that you can take action not take action change your lifestyle um or what not So there's absolutely value that's created as long as everybody cooperates. What happens that's more problematic is when you don't have that mutual cooperation um, or mm-hmm. don't have direct um uh direct value creation. So as example, uh insurance companies are fantastic at this. You exercise and if you prove that you exercise well, you get a discount, a refund, a rebate, you get, you, you get you get money back. um even before fitness trackers if you remember if you went to the gym and had gym membership you got a discount so this is just a natural evolution uh of that your body's um uh physical biological condition can be correlated to general preventative uh value through you know genomics and what not or very direct monetary value through as an example not just that it's society at large because eventually society is paying we all understand it not just one person so the wealth and the health is cumulative too people talk about wealth i want to talk about health in today's conversation and as a society we create a better society which is more healthier and create better habits or a society where we are eating we are obese we are not taking care of ourselves now there will be outliers everywhere we go to different countries and we see like countries like singapore phenomenal environment they have most people i see are fairly healthy i don't have the correct exact data set but i'm very fairly confident that the data set will prove that the people in germany are healthier in countries like singapore so coming back to the sensors 
we both understand the value this data create and provide to organization like ours and even government at large. What as a consumer I feel is I don't get a piece of that. So for example, based on my behavior, based on what I do, I'm not seeing how it is really creating a broader level environment around me. I can go and track myself in Strava. I can go and correct myself in all trail. There are a million other apps. I share the data, but I don't really get anything meaningful out of it. What I really get is, oh, you know, you are a winner. I get some kind of gratification. I find some followers. That's interesting. What I would like to really see is how it is impacting. Does people get inspired when I go for a run? Or is the average health goals of that community is improving? The area I live in, so I live in Las Vegas in a small community here. How it is impacting the whole community and what can I do more to share uh, my pictures on Facebook? Is it creating more uh, uh, enthusiasm or uh, value for the friends I have or I'm putting them down? when I'm doing my chin-ups or when I'm doing push-ups. And something, now this is more at a, a philosophical level, but how my health data is creating better value for the world, that is something I want to talk about. And that's where I see the problem of our government has done a very poor job, personally I feel, that taking this health data and creating better value for me and community and showing that, hey, these are the model citizens. And if I'm not, then what can I do to become that model citizens when it comes to the health? That's what I'm talking about. Second thing I want to talk about is where you can help me understand is this sensor data. Now we can capture almost six to seven biofeedbacks, it's biomarkers. How this data correlate and provide me better value as me personally and my family and community at large. I'm not seeing any initiative from anyone around that. Is it just the problem of data sharing or more? That is my bigger question. Yes. So the interesting thing about all of this is in theoretically, there is a tremendous amount of value that can be created with the data and, and the actions beyond that. The reason why many of us don't see the immediate impact has less to do with technology and more to do with economics. But there, there's a, there's a because who's going to pay for this? You know, if, it, if it's an insurance company, fine, you have. But there's a very interesting anecdote I want to share with you. Um, so uh, there's a company that um, is called uh, Propeller Health. Um, they're one of at least two companies I'm aware of um, that have a smart inhaler for people who have asthma. Uh, Propeller was acquired by ResMed about uh, two, three years ago, I think. Propeller Health um, had a very interesting thing. Every time somebody with asthma took uh, use the inhaler, it would it would it would uh, uh, log the location, the time, uh, and all this. Now, what that did when people started doing it in a municipality or in a city or, or, or an area is it was a proxy, an approximation for air quality. So the the correlation is if you have more pollution or more pollen or worse air quality than folks with asthma would have to use their inhaler more. That was the underlying premise. And and, and there's, there's a high level of correlation. And what that allowed people to do, people who has asthma, is to then look at that and say, well, there's a region of high inhaler use here. There's a region here. Maybe when I drive to work, I'll go around all of it and take a different different route. Yeah. And you know, it, things like that, once you start getting into the realm of public health, that can drive policy. That can That's concrete evidence that there there's issues uh, like that so when you look at population health the entire community will benefit if everyone or if many people participate uh in that and so there are uh, examples of that happening uh, but it, it may not be acute individual but more on a population population scale so Sridhar, so COVID is a very good example of data sharing and collaboration I believe we can create tremendous opportunities for tons of entrepreneurs too, but for really the citizens. 
we know technology today is centralized. Mm -hmm. Four or five years ago, or at least 20 years ago, we used to talk about decentralization. Then the centralization came with the internet. Now, with the crypto kind of infrastructure, a blockchain infrastructure, we talked about, again, the decentralization in a way. Right? Because we don't want power at one place, and that's why crypto or blockchain or Bitcoin and all is getting so much of uh, uh, traction. I'm not a fan or not opposite to that camp, but in terms of technology, in terms of the concept, I do see tremendous value of decentralization of the technology, a decentralization of this data set. AI and the models in AI are proven that we can solve some interesting problems. So talking about even the health data, which is distributed, even our own family health data is distributed, right? Your health data, my health data, or your brother and your sisters, that health data is distributed in multiple places. Even your information is, some is with Siri, some is with Alexa. I mean, I'm just pushing a little bit, or some is with the bulbs we have in our house, with the Wi-Fi connectivity, and offices and elemental machines. Your company is creating another type of sensors which capture tons of data. Then we have data of, about our movement, which is captured in our phones and trackers. All that data can be assimilated at one place. The environment we are exposed every single day, we can get a lot of data feed from weather to other uh, aspect of it. Our travel can be also logged pretty easily. So if we can create a model around it and we decentralize this, what kind of analytics we can create that is something I'm talking about because then the problem of centralization goes away. And if the problem of centralization goes away, we are able to run these infrastructure for fraction of the cost. Because the big challenge is what you and me are talking about is how do we create such a large infrastructure which requires so much of capacity, so much of technology, so much of this. In this, this whole thing can be pretty much open source or at least crowdsource. Yeah. where the data is fairly anonymized. It's not in the control of one government. It's not in the control of one party. And we have this health data available for research purposes. We have this data available to serve a purpose. And I'll use a funny example. I recently watched a show on Netflix, The One, mm -hmm. where they talk about connecting matchmaking using DNA data. Interesting concept. Uh, of course, it is a, you know, it's a TV show, but it just you and me are a big fan of watching these kind of shows like Star Wars and all, right? Just go and watch those and get inspired. Imagine we can create models, which we put it out there in the market and people analyze all this with their own data set and improvise these models on the ongoing basis. We create a new infrastructure, not only for data share, we create an infrastructure which can go beyond communities, can go countries and the whole world and generate value. Do you think our technology is there? Do you think it's even, um, I'm just dreaming and uh, talking like uh, somebody who has no freaking clue or you think it's feasible? Uh, the kinds of, uh you know, scenarios that we that we see on, in these science fiction um, uh, shows and movies. Much of that is actually possible today. Um, the What holds them back, again, uh, is, you know, the simple things of economics, ethics, and, and regulatory. But all that can be solved if the benefit can be demonstrated clearly. If there's a clear benefit to society or, or an individual, then the ethics, the regulatory and economics all resolve themselves. And what we're finding is people are working on showing these benefits. And there, there's a, a company, um, uh, Helix, that was uh, started a few years ago. And their whole premise um, early on was if we can amass lots and lots of people's genetic information and, and, and genomic data, then we can create you know, I'm simplifying this, but we can create an app store where third parties can come up and data mine that and build personalized applications. So if we know what your what your genome is and we know um, other folks in your demographic, um, how they respond to nutrition, for example, there's there's a number of, of 
of, an, of a, um, a companies that are selling personalized uh, meal plans based on your DNA. Um, there's a number of folks who are do, doing the microbiome. Uh, I think um, our friend Naveen, Naveen Jain, has uh, uh, is working on that. They all have one thing in common, though, and and, and that this is one thing that uh, I think is important. They're all starting out trying to demonstrate the value to the individual cash pay consumer, direct to consumer. So they're not going through regulatory, they're not going through municipalities or government. They're saying, listen, the best way to demonstrate value is let me go to people who will pay out of their own pocket. And so what this does is this creates um, opportunities for uh, you know, the, the, the focus to make products and services that benefit a single individual as opposed to a population. And I think that's a very key observation is that's how you're going to prove value and overcome the non-technological barriers that are holding these technologies back. So you are talking about how do you generate value with this? Yes. Right. How do you and how do you spend in this area? Mm -hmm. uh, my question remains around collaboration. You and me have no problem sharing our data with our family members or friends. We have problem sharing this data outside, one problem. Second problem we have it is even our own data is all over the world or all over the map. Like our cookies are with Google, which is a big problem we are dealing with right now. So tons of our data is not even in our own control somebody else, including Facebook to other uh, social media network has it. Strava has some of our data. Uh, mm -hmm. Our watch has some of our data. Our phone has some of our data. Even we don't have our own data assimilated at one place. Mm -hmm. The problem I'm saying is our problem is multi-fold. First problem is how do we centralize this data? Because if I have to do all the efforts to collect this data, it is far more complex, right? We are adding so many layers of additional data set things like Alexa to uh, Siri to all those places. Apple Watch collect even now have oxygen level. Brilliant data set. But again, it's isolated in one network. So we have to look at this problem slightly differently, in my opinion. One is, how do we centralize our own data set? Number one. Second is, making sense out of this data set because the purpose has to be clear otherwise why will i do it mm -hmm. right so how do we centralize it and it should be distributed infrastructure because if i have to upload all this data on amazon cloud i will have a lot of problems around right why will i put all my data set i want to be out of facebook and now i'm going to put it in aws something something is not right so how do we put that in a blog where this data can be shared to specific users or for a specific purpose. So first is find values around assimilating of that data. Second is how do we share this data to our close family members or create multiple layers of security around this data set? Because that's one thing. For example, around COVID, I'm completely okay around contact tracing. I'm completely okay with that because it provides value to me even. Uh, was I in proximity of this person? Now, to expand it further, a lot of people say, uh, even with the DNA data or genome data, we start looking for the problems we don't have. Completely in agreement that we may not have that level of gene mutation, but we start generalizing these things and then we start looking for problems which we don't have and what happened when we start focusing too much. It, it's it just consciously we start creating those problems for our, ourselves. So there is a line we have to draw somewhere. So question I'm going back to is, how do we assimilate this data for ourselves and create value for ourselves? I believe that should be the number one thing before we talk about sharing. Yeah. And for the sharing, I believe we need to come up as a technologist, you and me have this obligation to come up with some ideas around how do we share this sensor data to rest of the world? Yes. So a couple of really interesting points in here. One, you talk about how do we assimilate all this data? I would take one step further back and say the first problem is uh, we don't know where our data even is. 
if you look at the last 15, 20 years of online activity and this and that, and how many of us have changed doctors and dentists and the average consumer, the average individual doesn't even know, uh, there's a lot of unknown unknowns. They don't even know where where we, we, we've, we've left our digital digital fingerprint, digital, so to speak. So mm -hmm. let's, but let's say there's a way to capture on it. Um, and in fact, again, I'm blanking on this. There was a startup company and they did something very similar. They were able to put together an entire picture of an individual based on all of their different, uh, uh, different um, online activities. And they were actually selling this information to law enforcement. That was their business model. Uh, and it was in the news maybe a year or two years ago, and I completely blanking on uh, uh, on this. But but you know basically you can you can get a very good picture of of of, of someone's behavior online, and that's just, that's just through massive data mining, through publicly available information being able to correlate. So it is collectible, um, and it's highly unlikely that the average person like you or me, individual, is going to be able to do it. So you do need a organization, a company, or, or, or something like that, that 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 can do this, uh, have the resources to do this. But let let's say let's say you or I were able to pull all those data together. Um, one of the things that the medical device, uh, the, the medical community has already solved, is the ability to separate identity, uh, personally ident uh, you know, personally identifiable right. information, from. Yeah. Um, from the actual uh, data. So you separate that into metadata, who you are and all of this, with the data. And as long as there's a pointer, a linker between the two, all of this as anonymized cannot be traced back to you and, and it's fine. And so that that those schemes already exist. Now you can do it through encryption, you can do it through all this, you can try to do it through some of the blockchain uh, technologies that, that are out there. So that part of it is already solved. What isn't solved and isn't easy is to, uh, a assimilate all that and then be able to extract out um, identifiable and non-identifiable data if, if, and but again technologies exist but the integration of all that is yet to be done in a seamless manner but going on to your second question let's assume we're able to do all that because you know the technologies exist or whatever so if we do that so what what's the benefit um and this is where uh you know, we have to look five or 10 or 20 years into the future and say, okay, there's, you know, any technology can be used for good or bad. And so what are the positives that we can do? So things like disease prevention, absolutely. Things like disease, uh, uh, no, uh, transmission of diseases. There was, um, there was a, again, I don't remember the name of the startup, but it was a, a connected thermometer for taking temperature. Um, if I if you use the example of the thermometer, parents would use it on their children and they would share the data and they would get a very early indication is there a flu epidemic is there a flu going around the school but imagine this scenario um you know uh we have elderly parents and oftentimes they're left alone if they were to have a fitness tracker on them we can monitor their daily activity are they getting out of bed at the right time are they you know walking around enough and if you see an anomaly in that you can very quickly, um, you know, through AI type of a prediction, you can very quickly raise an alarm and alert the the caregiver. Um, and it's now I have a real uh, uh, situation. In fact, one of my friend, uh, it's a sad story. His father passed away, and they found out about him after two days. He used to live alone. Yeah, and, and he slept. Nobody, no help. And he yeah. tried uh, investing into the companies uh, like Alert and all, but I 100% agree with you that, and the help comes from the close by. So Sridhar, I think we should seriously think personally to put some standards out. You are an expert of sensor technology, that how these sensors can even communicate locally, not to I like what you're talking about that I can track my parents' uh, uh, fitness and do something with that. But think of a world, we are all good citizens. I personally believe in that people have situations where they take the wrong things, they do weird things to each other, but most of the circumstances, people are good citizens, good Samaritans. We wanted to help each other. If we can provide 
a new layer of communication where this become this just this interesting opportunity you talked about for the wellness it can create phenomenal opportunities and better health for all humans don't you think there's if data were universally used okay. um there's far the, 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 the there's so much like we know on the prevention side of disease yeah. and the the challenge has been a reluctance to share this data for privacy concerns that makes total sense um but also on the on the uh, you know on the on the side of um how do you actually pay for prevention and, and, and i I have, a, i have a philosophical argument here in that if you look at the way that in the us um medical systems and insurance are set up they're not set up nearly as as well to incentivize prevention as they are to incentivize you know getting sick and then curing afterwards um until those models flip um you're not going to get it. those models have flipped for weight loss by the way for weight loss there's a very clear economic model that $1 invested in weight loss gives you $1.50 in return um but that same type of study uh, actually for 10 years before uh, I did misfit I was in the diabetes space making a uh, glucose meter wow. and there was a 10 year uh, academic trial called DC DCC to diabetes complications and something trial um 10 years of data they had to collect in order to convince insurance companies that monitoring your glucose uh for type 2s was actually beneficial and to to get re 10 years of study so that's that's the uphill battle is that the technology is there but the economics have to be shown to be beneficial and the privacy and ethical concerns have to be shown to be mitigated uh and so the good good thing for people like you and me is that technology is there <laughs> it's just getting it into the public and to show that value in a way that is actionable is uh is an ongoing process in the last 7 to 10 years we've made tremendous strides thanks to digital health the whole industry of digital health um is centered around that and uh we have some great advocates in the FDA that are really pushing this forward so i have a challenge for you shridhar you're yes, an expert you're an expert of sense you understand how data work the challenge i have for you is think how do we create an infrastructure like that where nobody needs to make money we build it very similar to crypto concept very similar to blockchain where we all in a way own it and we all participate mm-hmm. so we take that friction out of it and let's have another call in few weeks or next month talk about it because i personally believe and i'm reading a lot about it right now that how do we create decentralized infrastructures because i am personally seeing the biggest problem our world has is centralization when you talk about putting the data at one place it is scare the hell out of me personally and it's not about my data sharing that doesn't worry me because i have nothing to hide but the problem i see it is, is this sharing aggregate data at one place there is single point of failure now and the single point of truth what that really means we live in a world which is completely decentralized you and me behave very differently in a different environment we are not same when we are running in a park and when we are hiking and when we are at home when we are in office our personality changes the tons of things about us is decentralized and we talk about centralization of everything i know i'm talking a little bit more out of uh, my areas of expertise however i honestly believe people like you and me who consider ourselves futurists think about decentralization and how do we take all these barriers out of it where the whole world is decentralized our dna is and decentralized we give permission we don't give permission it's up to us but the data is available with single click with some kind of mechanism the data can be shared 
some is public some is private some by invitation we have all the basic infrastructure and understanding i honestly believe we are looking at this problem differently we are still talking about uh, that uncle sam is looking at this or we are still looking at this problem google is looking at it aws we change that paradigm data is not at one place data is decentralized data is completely into some kind of a blockchain kind of infrastructure and it's available to who and what it needs to be made available to that's what the promise of blockchain people have done it i know it is not truly identical to a uh, blockchain here but i am i honestly believe people like you can build that it's not impossible dream to build it it's just thinking through this problem differently than the problem the way we are trying to solve the problem in past that's my two cents yes no i think you've hit the nail on the head in that the data can be actionable and and value can be created whether it's pure monetary value or non monetary value can be created but the infrastructure is in its infancy to allow that and uh i guess i will definitely look forward to our next conversation about this because there's uh there's a world that we can imagine that we need to build towards we're just very very early stages in uh, building the technology infrastructure and social infrastructure uh to allow that to happen but uh but yeah that's i i will take that challenge <laughs> and maybe that is a topic for our clubhouse we bring our kinernet friends and we really talk about decentralization because there is over centralization of everything <laughs> and i honestly believe if we put all of our minds together we can find ways to decentralize it and build it without anyone owning it and that is the word we would like our kids to grow up you were asking me this question i think that is a word i would like to see when things are not centralized to the level it is today yeah. we don't want minority report we don't want people to go to prison because they are going to commit crime in reality they may or may not and it, it, it just this is a bizarre world we are living in and that's concerns me the good news is that uh, we have people that we both know who are working on these kinds of issues and uh, definitely I look forward to a, a clubhouse session with our friends <laughs> let's do that and we have a on a you know on a serious note we have a responsibility to share where we are in our lives it's not something we should take it uh, easily if we don't solve it who else we need to leave the world a better place for our children This absolutely does <laughs> but thank you very much for your time once again for our audience we had mr shridhar on our show today phenomenal guy please check his company elemental machines.io it's a brilliant place to learn they are doing phenomenal work in sensor space especially in biotech they have done brilliant work shridhar is a dear friend of mine we know each other for several years thank you very much shridhar for joining us and uh, we will look forward to have another conversation with you very soon thank you wonderful thank you